Ahoy there, you landlubbers! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Modded Minecraft with Captain Etho. I'm Captain Etho today because I'm very congested. <laughs> <clears throat> so you'll have to excuse my voice if I sound a little rough. Uh, but yeah, so I built this boat last time, guys, and I looked at the comments. Um, I was all proud, all happy, my very first boat. Turns out, I put the sails on backwards. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did my best. All right, moving on. So I've been having a lot of fun since last episode, uh, just doing some random stuff on here. I built like a little auto-brewing machine here to get speed potions. We need speed potions for the speed upgrades. These babies here. Um, for the pneumatic craft stuff. We were trying to set up a drone army thing that would automatically pick up endermen and then kill them and make some kind of cool enderman farm. I have worked on that. We're going to check that out in just a second. Something else I did experiment with though. Um, I was trying to set up a wireless terminal for our AE system and found out you need like 500 to 1000 RF per tick pretty easily depending on how far you want it to reach. So we need a lot of power. <laughs> so I was looking at this. We experimented with uh, TNT generators before. Um, I wanted to see how compact I could make one. So basically what it does, creates cobblestone, then that goes into a pulverizer, which makes gravel and sand. Um, some of the sand goes into here. The gravel goes into here, gets made into flint. Then the flint gets made into gunpowder using mechanisms OP pressure here. And then that goes into here, and that makes the TNT. Yeah, so this actually works pretty good. It's a 3x3, three three, too tall machine. It got sound mufflers on it, so it's a little less annoying, but that doesn't work for the mechanism machines for some reason. <laughs> so, can't r get rid of that clunking sound. Um, Basically, this is a self-contained generator, though, so it uses power to make TNT, and then it burns that TNT to make even more power, so it's kind of cheaty in that way. You get more out of it than you put in, um, and then it also produces some sand as a byproduct, which is great, like some extra sand, because I need sand constantly, and I usually have to pulverize it, which takes even more power, but we get it from here for free which is cool. I put a cell down here so you can see how fast it charges. It's not bad. It's really not too bad. It's probably two to three hundred RF per tick. But we would need several of these to get the kind of power I want. So I don't know if this is really the way to go. I, it does keep the generator running all times though. So yeah, kind of a cool thing. Let's go check out the, the Enderman farm though. Woohoo! <laughs> That's a speed boost from uh, Z-Tones as it's trying it out. It gives you like speed 4 when you walk over it. Kinda cool. Uh, I dug a hole down here to get to our end portal a little easier. I might decorate that um, sometime. But yeah, drone army. It's a thing. It's possible. And it's very cool. <laughs> so basically, I think I got six drones going right now. So they're flying around. They're picking up endermen. And then I set up a Tinker Smeltery. Something I realized as I was doing this is you can actually drop these guys into a smeltery and it just gives you resonant ender, which is awesome. Because <laughs> normally, if you want to get that stuff, it's, uh, you gotta like melt ender pearls in a magma crucible. Let's see if we can find it here. Do, 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 do. You need this stuff to make Enderium, by the way, which is one of the endgame uh, ingot types. Yeah, it takes 20,000 RF to melt one Ender Pearl. You need one Ender Pearl per Enderium ingot. So it's it's not like impossible to do, but it is expensive. Um, but yeah, with this, it just automatically gives it to you, so that's cool. And when they die, they also drop Ender Pearls, which we could probably pick up with a vacuum hopper pretty easily. Uh, the way the drones work, there's one drone here, he's like the fuel guy, he picks up fuel from a source, such as a barrel here. He goes around to all these uh, 
charging stations, I'm using advanced liquid compressors to generate the, the air pressure. Uh, the nice thing about these is they go up to 20 bars of air pressure just right off the bat without any upgrades. So basically all you need is one of these. I got three heat sinks. There's one on the bottom, which helped to make it run more efficiently at a cooler temperature. And then there is uh, these charging stations, uh, pressure gauge, which has been upgraded so you can fine tune the adjustment. And then if it reaches 19 bars of pressure, this redstone turns on and it shuts this off so it stops generating more air. If it goes above 20, it can explode, so you don't want that to happen. But uh, anyways, this farm seems like it's going to work exactly like I wanted it to. Right now we have six drones. I was going to do 16 total, uh, but I've kind of had a change of heart. I realized we're never going to see them if they're in the end. We should move... We should do this whole drone mob farm in the overworld, maybe, like around the fishing village. And instead, we're going to try and make an actually efficient Enderman farm. I know, crazy concept, right? Because uh, there is the Ender Generator. And I think this is where I should get my power now. <laughs> or one of the sources. So I had a look around the void area here near our island. Our island's over here. Uh, this is where I spawn in. Um, over here, there's not many islands. This would actually be a pretty good spot to make the Enderman farm. I wouldn't have to remove too much stuff. And most of the islands are actually pretty small. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go around, get rid of them, using the Wand of Equal Trade here. Cool little trick you can do if you select torches and then right-click on something, it gets rid of it. Nice way of getting rid of blocks. So yeah, I'm going to go around and get rid of all these, these islands. Then we'll start building the farm. Okay, so I've gotten rid of quite a few islands here, but my wand has ran, run out of charge several times and I've drained all my nodes, so I'm wondering if we can use a different method as well. SDX. I haven't touched this stuff in a long time because I'm terrified of it. Okay. <laughs> it is stronger than TNT. Still need quite a few pieces per island by the looks of it. It is a lot stronger than TNT. And stone has very high blast resistance, so... Uh, that's not bad, actually. Maybe five or six pieces for one of these little islands would do it. And then get rid of the obsidian. Yeah, it could work. Alright, guys. So I have uh, been clearing islands here. I got quite a bit done. You see the big open space here now. Um, still got a few to go, though. But we're going to start building the Enderman farm here before I lose all my energy. <laughs> I've removed over 20,000 endstone by now. Like, it's crazy. They, they don't look very big, but there's so many of them that it starts to add up. I think we'll want to build maybe right around here. Okay, guys. So I uh, set up the smeltery here, pretty much. Um, had to go get some more seared bricks. This thing took up a ton. <laughs> uh, it's a 7x7 seven seven monster, though. I hope it works. Is this too big, I wonder? Let's put the lava inside. It's not showing me like you can place blocks in here. Oh, something is wrong. Oh no. Why doesn't it work, guys? It's invalid. Why is it invalid? I'm not sure. Is it because I have the torch in here? Oh, okay. That's what it was. Now we now we have the blocks available here. Good, good, good. I, I went and got more seared brick and I was one short, so I put a temporary seared window there <laughs> might not look the best so this thing has uh, 10 drains installed we're going to use those to cast the ender pearls as we get them here um, there is some weird corrosive gas it's invisible this is one of the reasons why i decide not to do the drone army thing yeah you see the torch just popped off there i'm a little worried because on the main island i was having trouble with uh like my smeltery just losing blocks. Like the smeltery controller broke on me once. It was just gone. Because I think this gas is destroying it. Which is very annoying. <laughs> uh huh. Alright, well, if we start losing blocks, we'll have to do something about it. Maybe let's start building our spawning platform, though, for the Enderman. Are you ready for this, guys? I've got a block picked out here, which might be a bit crazy. 
but it also might be amazing. Energized Void Stone. Okay, so let's let's try this out. It's a very expensive block, very beautiful. Uh, let's go which way? Towards the island? Let's go towards the void this way, maybe? With our spawning platform? I need to check what this looks like. If it emits light. Oh man, this looks crazy. This looks crazy! <laughs> I do really like it, though. Yeah, we have to check if this emits light, if it looks awesome. Uh, which, so far, I do like it quite a bit. And also, if Endermen will spawn on it, because if they don't, we got to find a different block type. Ho oh, ho. <laughs> okay, this definitely spawns Endermen. Got a whole bunch of them here. So let me show you possibly one way we could do this. One really fun way. Uh, I'll put down some light temporarily, just so it's not so dark. I'm thinking, like, we could do the open box fan. This thing is extremely good for mob farms because it pushes mobs about eight blocks or so, if I remember right. And it doesn't require anything except a redstone signal. So it's super, super easy and cheap uh, way of moving mobs around. What might be fun, though, since since I've done that before... Oh, not my hammer. I'm wondering, could we do a mob system that uses a vortex cannon? So that's this yellow thing from Pneumatic Craft. Look what it does. <laughs> so it shoots like 64 blocks or so. It looks like only one block wide. But you see those rings? It's kind of dark. Oh, torch is disappearing again. <laughs> but it moves the mobs very quickly right into the smeltery. And it doesn't seem to push me. Um, so maybe what we would do is make it shoot once at maximum pressure, at 10 bars of pressure, and then put it back into the charger real quick, and then charge it up. That way it always shoots the full distance. Ha oh, ha, yes! Okay guys, I think I got this figured out. Been trying to build a machine to use our cannon here, and basically, we got an autonomous activator, which functions as the right click. So, when it receives a redstone signal, that's what this high signal is for, uh, if we give it a pulse, it's going to use the cannon and shoot it. Then we have a servo down here that blacklists the fully charged cannon. So if it's not fully charged, this will pull it out of there, put it into the charging station. And then we have a fully charged one whitelisted. So when it's done charging, then it puts it back inside. So it only shoots it once. That way it's always fully charged, maximum power. And then we just have a little charging station here to keep this pressurized and we will have to activate this probably with a timer or something would work at whatever we want to set it to so let's try this out aha <laughs> so it shot one ring oh is it going through that quick or is it not working wait oh yeah you see how it's like going out going in always fully charged so it's going into this charger it doesn't take very long to get it back up to full pressure. It doesn't use much air pressure, I don't think. How far are these rings actually reaching? Because that's also important. That's like the limit, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's about the limit to our spawning platform here, which is pretty good. This is a huge platform. Um, and we will be able to observe the farm working from here, I think. Would be a good angle. So we'll be far enough away that they'll be able to spawn on there. And then we can see them fall in. Should be pretty cool. I'm going to set up five more of these, though, and probably lower it because I don't like it being up this high. Awesome. So I got five of these set up now, guys. We're going to try them out. Each of them has its own vortex cannon and charging station assigned. Uh, so it should be able to put out a constant lane of uh, vortexes. Vortexes? Whatever the pearl is. <laughs> Uh, I am only using one compressor. I want to see if it's able to keep up. Uh, this is pr a pretty powerful uh, air producer, though, so uh, it should be okay, I think. And to do the redstone, I just ran a line in the front here. I hope that doesn't get in the way, but we'll see here. Okay, where are? where's my timer? There they are. Oh, do I have my screwdriver, though? And where is it? It's in here. Got it. Sweet. Yeah, we got to rotate to the output. There we go. 
Oh, I think it's blocking it. No. Okay, I think what we'll have to do with this is use the Ender IO conduits. Because I'm pretty sure you can send like a redstone signal, items, power, and fluids all in one cable. Which is kind of what we need to do here because there's just not enough sides available. Uh, I've never used them before though, I'm scared. <laughs> Let's just try this out first. Uh, this has plenty of power in it. It'll last for quite a while. Let's just try it out uh, before we do that to make sure it actually works. So I'm just going to run the the wire on the top here and get rid of our power for the time being. Uh, we're one short, but it should work anyway. Okay, timer. Timer go out here. And maybe let's slow it down a little bit. So I'm not sure how much it's actually going to drain. Oh, it, why did it shut off? Oh, wait, no, it's still going. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like it's going to keep up, right? Yeah, it's got plenty of time. With five seconds, how's this doing on air pressure? Looks like we might be... No, it looks like it's keeping up, actually. Sweet. At five seconds, we could look into speeding it up, though. Okay, so that's going. Let's get rid of the lights and let's get some Enderman spawning and see how this performs. Make sure they get all the way to the edge here. I think I am pretty close to the limits. Pushing to the limits. <laughs> okay, let's back off. All the islands are not gone, though, so the spawn rates are not going to be as good as I would want. Okay, we got a few. <laughs> oh. Oh, they kind of slowed down at the end there, didn't they? Oh, no, it's working. It's working great. <laughs> you see that? Uh, it seems like some of them maybe get st stuck at the very end, though. They kind of bunch up and then... Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have gone quite that far, but it looks like it's working pretty decently, actually. If we increase the speed on that, where it was like pew, 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 <laughs> it would clear that platform in no time. Okay, so this is full of Endermen. In order to actually get them giving us resonant Ender, though, we need to put something in there that will um, burn them. So I'm going to throw a piece of iron in. That'll melt, and then it'll start killing them. Oh, here it goes, here it goes. <laughs> oh my goodness. 18 buckets. 7 buckets every damage hit here right now. That is pretty good. 7 buckets, that's like... Whoa. <laughs> I think that's like 30 ender pearls or so, right? And as soon as they get killed, this is going to get replaced right away. Quite a few of them are falling off the edge. I should put some kind of railing so that doesn't happen. Okay, everybody. So I've done a couple things here. I've added a white background so we can hopefully see them a little bit better. Vision in the end is not the best thing. I, I don't actually like recording episodes in the end or, or the nether. Let's try this out. Oh, <laughs> that might not have helped. The night vision potion. Kind of makes everything neon pink now. <laughs> But yeah, we got a border on here so they don't push each other off. I noticed something with these. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, maybe I was wrong. It wasn't draining any power for the longest time. Now, oh, now it's starting to. Ah, I thought we could get away with not powering it. A lot of times it activates, so it doesn't use any RF, it seems. Just because it's a quick pulse on and off, so it doesn't drain very much. But yeah, we'll still have to do the ender... I owe conduits, it looks like. Uh, let's try out... I brought a couple things with us. Oh, let me fix this. So we got smeltery bricks with us. I brought a vacuum hopper. Let's see if... If we put it over here, can we pick up the ender pearls? No. It has to be a lot closer. Uh-oh. We looked at the, the warp guy. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, let's try lower this, I guess. Uh, maybe, because there should be a ton of enderpearls in this tank. 
Man, that sound. If I put it over here... Yeah, you see all the enderpearls fly towards it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're getting tons of drops from this thing. This is insane. Okay. That might... I don't know if that affects the smeltery, though. Like, maybe it can't hold as much in the tank now that we've done that. Sound go down. It is very loud. Okay, let's build a bit of a platform here so we can start pumping the resonant ender out of here. I think I brought some more laboratory blocks with me, too. Yeah, so this is the part of this I'm not quite so sure about. I might need your guys' help. Um, if I set up, like, a fluid duct to this, right, and we start pumping out the ender, or the resonant ender, something that's going to happen is it's going to pump this all out. Like, you got to select it so that it's at the bottom. I brought some drums with me just so we can empty this. Alright, so that's pumping it out now. The resonant ender is going down. Okay, it's just about out of this stuff. It's down to 12 buckets. Something we can do is set up a filter on the servo so it only pumps out resonant ender if we whitelist it. So now it's not going to pump out the iron, and I think we got some blood in here too. Problem is, I think once this runs out, then this goes to the top of the smeltery. And because it's not first in place, it doesn't pump it out. Yeah, so this isn't pumping it out anymore. How do we how do we fix that so it always pumps this out? Is there a trick to it? I don't really know. <laughs> Cuz I can't be like over here constantly, oh, well, it's time to put this at the bottom again. It's all full. We need it to constantly pump it out of here cuz it fills up very quickly. Um but what we can do, I'm going to melt some of this stuff in here. And then we can cast uh, a mold for ender pearls. I think using an emerald will work. Can we put an ender pearl in here, or do you have to use it? You can, okay. Oh, but it doesn't let me cast it, so yeah. You can use, I think, an emerald or a pan mold for this. Oh, I didn't... No, I'm stupid. <laughs> Gotta select it. Aluminum brass. This is what you use to make the molds. Let's try this again. No, it doesn't work for that. It should work for this, though. So. Yeah, here we go. So that makes a gem mold, which also works for en ender pearls, I think. So now if we go back to the resonant ender, start casting, should make an ender pearl. Yeah, cool. Because we only need probably a a drum of this stuff at any given time. I don't need that much enderium. We mostly want ender pearls so that we can uh, generate power with them. And also, a lot of the ender IO recipes require ender pearls. How much does this give us? This is a uh, eight times ender generator. It looks like it goes 320 RF per tick for five seconds or so. 4.6 or something. I think it said. It's not too bad. I read you can combine these with uh, blaze powder, though. Make eyes of ender, and they last like five times longer in the generator. Which could be another thing to do. Alright, guys. Very cool. So we pretty much got this project all done. Just a couple more things to fine-tune. But I'm very happy with it. It seems like it's going to work great. Uh, I do need help with this problem. If you know the answer, please let me know. This happens to me anytime I try to automate... Uh, tinkers, I'll get some piece of garbage stuck in the smeltery and then it breaks everything. So is there a way to keep pumping this out even after it runs out? Please let me know. Uh, but I got it pumping into a bunch of casters, so we're getting ender pearls galore here. Uh, let's go into hover mode. Oh, I just about fell in the void. <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, we got them pumping out of the casting tables here into this pipe. Over to the storage cache over here, just for now. Might set up a tesseract, and it produces a good amount of ender pearls as it is. And also, some the ones we get from the Enderman actually dying are going up here for the moment. Loot bags, we're getting tons of those. Um, one thing I've noticed though, like if I back off, the Enderman count never seems to get up to 80, which is what I would like. So the islands are are spawning them. 
the surrounding islands. I got to get rid of those. And then hopefully we can reach maximum efficiency because we're only about maybe a third or half of what we could actually get up to with this. I did put in a second uh, liquid compressor here and sped up the, the timer on here. Might even be able to speed it up a little bit more. Originally we had it at five seconds. Now it's at four. I think I might try three. See if we can keep up at that rate. Uh, but yeah, you see it flipped over here. So it filled up again, and now it's totally stuck. So hopefully come up with, with a solution for that. But otherwise, it is good. Let's grab, uh, let's grab a couple of these. Oh, do they only stack up to 16? Oh, I guess so. Okay. And let's get out of here. I set up one more thing on the pirate ship. <laughs> I figured this would be a, a great place for it. Oh, this is a TNT generator. Don't worry about that. Let's sleep for a little second here. Yeah, I was trying to think, what what could we do with this uh, boat we built? So I figured we're getting all these loot bags. We, we're going to want some way of automatically opening them. So uh, this is where the booty goes from our Enderman farm. It's made up a little thing down here. Hopefully it works. Yeah, so I just set up a little thing here. We'll pump these into here. And then you you flip the lever, and it sprays it everywhere. <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't quite work as well as I had hoped. Um, is it because... I bet you i got to move this. Oh, man. One second, let me try to fix this. Man, this is harder to do than I thought. This thing wants to shoot the items everywhere. But let's let's try this. I had to build like a wall here, and I just broke it with some redstone behind. Put the lever here, and yes. Okay, good. Got some weird lighting updates with the uh, the conveyor belts here, though. I don't know what's up with that. It looks dark no matter what I do. That is filling up fast. Okay. Darby treasure. <laughs> Let's do the comment of the day and wrap up our episode. Uh, it says, why not add custom NPC drivers to your trains? Also, I think adding NPCs to the Ethopunk village will help it come to life. Yeah, we got to do more with the custom NPCs. We haven't done anything with them in a long time, mostly because uh, every NPC I was doing was taking like two or three hours. Because you got to like find a skin for them, pick out a name, program them, give them a schedule, figure out where... Th oh, is it full already? Oh, man. <laughs> Do all kinds of crazy stuff that took forever. Uh, we need a more generalized system for it, I think. But yeah, it's a cool idea. One issue with them as well is they like to teleport if they're... Oh, what is this? The very fabric of magic seems to buckle each time it pulses. I've never seen this before. I bet you this is very important. Oh well. Anyways, hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Oh. <laughs> ah. Take care. Bye-bye.